I probably heard that before, right? Um, in your, your appointment with them, right? Yeah? Well, that's what we're going to be touching on. So the areas of discussion. And just as a reminder, the PowerPoint presentation may have copied everyone. As all the you know, so you won't have to try to you can make a little notes because you'll still get this at the end. So your AML CFT governance framework. You need to have that st structure in place. Yeah. Um, regular the regulators' expectation. We're doing what we're doing because yeah, expectation. Let's be real. If I didn't have to, I wouldn't bathe every day. I'll bathe every Saturday. But then because it's hygienic, I can't come in this classroom. <laughs> You don't want to have um, horse bread and all of the good stuff, but you know, some stuff you are required to do. Yeah? There are expectations. There are laws and rules. Outside of that, you wouldn't do many things, right? How many of you actually get that urge just to run every light? Bread like that is. <laughs> no? Now, Marissa, now you know you won't run some lights. Only after. Yeah. After you have a lot of work. But then you have rules. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's stopping you from doing that? What's stopping you? Rules? Getting catch? Getting catch? Yeah. Rules? Getting yeah. catch? Yeah. Rules? Yeah. Well, that too. Because most of us don't stop on the red like 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh, no, okay. So let's be. So don't forget. Don't pretend, right? You don't stop on the light three o'clock in the morning. Oh, no. You okay. Go down, you look at three and then you go. And then you go. So apart from that, the management issues, there will be issues in this um, structure that's in place. Uh, in your role as compliance officer, there will be challenges with management, senior executive, the board. You may be called upon to do some stuff you may feel, hey, I'm not prepared to do, I don't agree with. A lot of stuff you're going to be um, asked to do, you don't agree with. But of course, in many instances, do you think you pay your paycheck? Oh, yeah. My boss, she comes to me sometimes, and I, I, she will remain nameless. She would come and she would say, hey, how are you? She always asks, what's your opinion on so and so and so and so? Give a whole dissertation or something. No, 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 I just, no, 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 no. She said, great. I like where you're going. I put that in writing, double space it, and send it to me tomorrow. I'm okay, okay, feeling that good now my boss got my ideas. No. When I see that again, and it goes out by way of circular uh, internally, my name is on it. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> so, um, but guess what? It's a part of culture too. You make the boss look good. They may remember you when it's <laughs> you know, they may no guarantee. But guess what? Don't take it to heart when they utilize your ideas or they make use of it. Because at the end of the day, who signatures on it? The boss. So you can give all the great ideas and you can be there. They sponge it off you out, know, you know, but it is what it is. And that's the culture. You don't get caught up in that. And by the way, you are a subject matter expert. It's expected of you. When you go before the board, you know what they want from you? Results. They want your wisdom. You're certified. You're the ones who've been through these ICA classes, um, ACAMs, um, recertifications, um, more classes and course break and whatever. You are the expert. You may have a law degree too. Uh, CPA. You are the expert. So when you go before the board, they lean on your knowledge and your expertise. So when they say, okay, put it together. I like what you're saying. And then they sign off on it. That's what boards do, if you didn't know. They take your ideas and make it policy. You make them look good. Yeah? And of course, it keeps you gainfully employed to win. Yeah. Just remember that part. So don't get it twisted, you know? Uh, after my first experience, I think I, I'm not sure I ever shared it with the wrong. I had all my ideas, it was like a seven page. Um, yeah, she asked me, I'll put your toes together on the next. <laughs> And I sat down and listened to her just regurgitate all my ideas and I was like, and I was like, wow, my name was never mentioned once. No credit for her. No. She's along with, she's along with the bank, but I remember getting off from work and I was just driving down, you know, and you're passing that western esplanade and you're sitting down in your car and you're driving. And it was that one tear in the corner of my head. And it wouldn't come out. Yeah, I was hurting. I was very much hurting. But you know, you, you, you move on. That's life. So, every financial institution, 
if you're not aware of this, and I'm sure you, you are aware of this, you're doing the ICD, has in place a governance framework. Yeah? Your policies, procedures, rules, and guidelines. However it's um, adapted, you have that. You have your Bible. That's what we like to call it. It's called policies and procedures. That's how you guide it. Remember, it's that international best practice, international requirements. It's trickled down to the various um, regions and territories by way of laws. It's implemented. Um, it becomes regulations and legislation. Then you have to mirror these requirements in policies and procedures. You may have internal GCs or circulars, and it's trickled down to the front line. So you see how it started from way up here internationally and trickled down to the front line staff. Sometimes staff ask the question, why am I doing this? Well, it started somewhere, maybe part of EU. They have a directive. Um, say, for example, right now we have the, it's being incorporated in our terrorist financing um, uh, legislation proliferation. You know, you know, in the Bahamas, it ain't uh, no um, weapons of mass destruction. We don't play that. But, <laughs> but of course, it's that international standard. And you know, your your man is an island in himself, so we have to adopt the international accords and policies and have to incorporate in our legislation. Even though we don't have no weapons of mass destruction, it's an international standard. And it's trickled down to everyone else. And of course, it has to be adopted by your boards, senior management. Even though we don't have that issue, it's best practice. Yeah? So, back to your point, Ms. Smith, sorry, Williams. Corporate governance. Um, every corporate entity has to have self-governance. And what is corporate governance? It really refers to ways in which companies govern themselves, pretty much. Yeah? You ever hear someone say, govern yourself, young man. Act accordingly. You act in accordance with international best practices. So it's self-governance. Make sense? I try to keep this simple. Yeah? We ain't, we ain't trying to have no dissertation today. Um, corporate governance, it asks to identify who has the power. Who would you, you would know from the, co the structure and your corporate governance as to who has power. You know the receptionist ain't got no power. <laughs> you know that. But when you see the CEO, oh yeah, he signed off on some stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah, don't, don't play with him. <laughs> you see the board member, oh yeah, I gotta get cool with that one. She can do some stuff with me. But you know who, the, who has the power, who has accountability? because that's all embedded in policies and procedures. It has to be spelled out, yeah? You can't, it can't be a free fall, and it goes back to your Bible, policies and procedures, which is dictated by directors from the top. Make sense? Okay, and who really makes the decisions? You need to know who your decision makers are, who has power, and who has accountability. Because everyone at your financial institution is accountable in some way. Whether you're personal liability, whether you're accountable for your unit, you're accountable for AML, you're accountable for business performance, everyone is accountable. And that's all documented. Yeah? It is, in essence, a toolkit that enables management and the board to deal more effectively with the challenges of running a company. There's a rule in business called if it's not documented, it doesn't exist. Because if you don't have rules documented, people make up stuff. You know that guy in the way? People say, oh yeah, well back in the day we used to, okay, show me that writing. Marissa, please show me that writing. Well, I remember back in 84, listen here, this 2018, you start talking about uh, back in the day when you open an account with just a signature card. No photo. You can't do that no more. Things have changed, things have evolved. Policies would have been adopted. Yeah? So you can't utilize what happened 20 years ago today. So really this enables management to make effective changes. And guess what, when it comes down to financial services, it's dynamic. You know why? Stuff like FATCA. You never know you had to uh, adopt your forms and you have all these new requirements, CRS. Weapons of mass destruction, you ever thought in your lifetime when we had um, one bank on Bay Street, RBC, we'd be talking about weapons of mass destruction? No, not like that, right? And then there'll be more changes. Have you seen the recent change um, with account opening by Central Bank where you have to adopt two points of contact? Mm -hmm. Everyone saw that? Mm -hmm. It went into effect on the 1st of May, 2018? Mm -hmm. What no. do you mean by two points of contact? Sorry? What do you mean by 
Yes. Do yeah, they have a listing as to what's expected? Um, yes. Yeah, you, you, are, you want to talk with the mm -hmm. So we had to give um, training to frontline staff on that, on their expectation, where they have now um, referees, persons who can give um, attestation to say that, hey, I know the Ron like one. He resides at X, Y, and Z Street. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's going to have to come back. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You got that. You can do call. You have to call back. So now when the person comes in to open the account and, they, and you want to use as a point of contact a cell phone, demonstrate that the phone, that's your number. Call me right here at the bank and you can make a note on your file. Obviously, postpaid, sell your phone. Show me a copy of a recent bill within three months. Uh, not exceeding three months old. I mean, except that as the point of contact, the regular mail. Well, of course, well, there you go. You need to have that that type of information to contact because you never know. You just never know. Um, corporate governance ensures that businesses have appropriate decision making processes and controls. And it goes back again to controls. Without controls, there's room for chaos. And you have to have controls and it has to be documented. And you need to know who has power, who can make decisions, who can do certain things. Let me give you an example of chaos. I hope I ain't talking about no one around me. You know, I always start off by saying that. <laughs> College of the Bahamas, the young lady who accidentally paid herself 600000 over that. You, you all remember that? How could, you have, how could you have one staff have the power to write the checks, pay all the checks, reconcile the books? Why would, why would one person be invested with all that authority? So no segregation. So you could accidentally pay yourself $600 over a seven year period. And it goes under that. It's a four different like four different banks. Yeah. So um, accidentally, you got to say that. But any accidentally, Marissa, you've got to say, alleged. Well, alleged. She's unconvicted, right? Yeah, I think she was, um, she had to pay the money back for face 15 years. 15 years in Sorry? Well, yeah. I'll never say that. I mean, because we have short time memories. We probably don't get that. That's what she got But I'll tell you this much. From what I know of that scenario, a lot of money was spent on some trips. She enjoyed her seven years. So don't feel bad for her. She saw the world. Like my friend over here said she's going to be um, what you want to say. She has seen the world, so don't cry for her. No, no. So just a, qu a quick recap. So when we talk about the corporate governance, it's really how a corporation, business entity, is run. It's a structure that's put in place to um, spell out who has power, accountability, um, the decision makers, these places are identified, and it also <coughs> seeks to identify what type of control mechanisms are in place. To, yeah, how are you doing? What control measures are in place to ensure that um, everything runs smoothly? Yeah? So this really is your, I guess, if this was straight, that would be your Bible. That's the word. Yeah? Any questions with that? Um, trying to make it as simple as possible in that regard. Not the, no? All right, cool. I like that. You have the regulators. If you are regulated by your primary regulator being the Central Bank of the Bahamas or Securities Commission or any other regulator, they do have expectations. And I start off by saying setting the tone at the top because it's expected that the best example would be your boss, right? That's not always the case. Because we've seen some bosses gone before the court. But um, they're expected to set the example. Yeah, mm -hmm. they would want to ensure that their entity or their organization, while it's being profitable, it's in line with best practices and meeting their regulatory commitments. Yeah, um, full oversight, ensuring that these decision makers have their fingertip on the pulse as to what's actually going on. You ever heard it say in the front line staff know exactly what's going on? But the people where they so far, they, they don't even know they ought to touch as to what's going on. And if you have full oversight, you need to, whether it's through your middle managers, reach out to the voices who are actually feeling it, the front line, 
So they have to get communication from the front line to middle management, and it's echoed to um, your board or that's working compliance. You're going to be testing these controls, yeah? So that means you have to report to the board and say, hey, this is the gaps we're seeing. Uh, these are deficiencies would probably need to be remediated, and these are some slackness. So you see how that middle uh, management is getting it echo um, information from the front line and conveying it back to the board. So to have full oversight, you need to have your fingertip on the pulse as to what's actually going on. You have to be connected. And no one has ever seen a TV turn on without being plugged in, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're the board and you ain't connected to a power source, you're just there for show and tell. So you need to be connected. So it's trying to make it you know, late, late time. So in order to have the full oversight, you need to be connected and engage with your middle management and front line. And then awareness. You, again, you need to be aware. How are you going to be aware if no information is flowing? Information flow up to you, know, and not from the big bosses coming down. When they have these um, annual meetings and stuff, hey, any concerns, any issues? If they don't ask you, you don't report it, there's no testing or evaluation, they, they would never know. So how could they remediate? How do you know if your house is leaking if you never do any inspection? You never see any cracks or any in the seam or whatever. Yeah? You need awareness. And awareness can be remediated again by training. Yeah? From your financial institution, do you have any issue with training? Do you get adequate training? Do they send you to seminars? Do they send you to um, a camps in Vegas for a week and tell you to come back with the material and perhaps train the other staff who didn't get to go? Train the trainer to ensure that the information is being um, refreshed and other persons get the opportunity to get the information. Everyone can go to the big seminars. We, we get that. But um, you have to have something in your, bu your budget. And this should come from the top that, hey, well, yeah, you, typically you send the ones to the top because there's some of them are the decision makers, but it's not wise to just send one person on a, a training exercise. You always send at least two to three. Always. Because you could send me on a thousand um, training uh, um, courses. What if one day in my head click and I say I can leave it? How much information has worked? What's the likelihood of two of us going to leave one day? But I mean, <laughs> what's, the likelihood, what's the likelihood that you can have two staff who can just leave? So it's, it's always best practice, best possible and feasible to send at least two places. Yeah? And you should have money to be created and budget for that. Now, one thing we've always uh, fought for is ensuring that you have at least two persons going on a training exercise. It makes sense. You know? So, so the regulator's expectation is that the tone is set at the top. These are supposedly the best examples for the company, the face of the organization. They have full oversight because they're connected and that everyone is engaged and they're trained. Yeah? Because it makes no sense you just hire all these bodies and they ain't trained. How you know what AML is? Put you on the counter as a talent. You ain't never had no awareness, no training. The fella just walk up to you and bring in a crooked sack with, with money. And you don't, you don't know, you just a dead headlight. Mm -hmm. So be good with that, the regulator's expectation. Setting the tone, having full oversight, and awareness by way of training, and engagement and communication. Good? Continuing the regulator's um, expectation. Um, the actions the board and senior management should take to promote effective AML compliance programs are and this is not an exhaustive list, by the way, because it's a long old list, but you know, they ain't either. They ain't trying to write no book. I try to keep it short to several um, bullet points. To define the organization's AML um, risk appetite. Remember, we had a discussion on that before. You need to know what's um, acceptable. There are going to be some business proposals that you either don't have the resources or the capacity to deal with. Yeah? If you're a small little um, organization, uh, why would you want to take on a big um, project like Obama? You don't. You don't have the. You don't have the staff. You don't have the means. You don't have the tools. You just don't have the risk appetite to take it on. An organization like the one I'm at, we don't have the, the capacity to take on. No one can touch that one. <laughs> There's some stuff. You gotta be careful now. I know one of y'all might be human with his daughter or something. But um, when you don't have the capacity 
Um, you, this would be including your, um, I want to say vision statement, your risk appetite, your awareness. There's certain things that you just are not going to take on. And I'll leave it at that. Um, monitor changes in the organization's risk profile because things will change because you perhaps get more resources, um, more equipment, technology. So now I don't have a compliance team of like some big organization like two. I call it no, no, no organization now, say file. So they got um, two compliance officers to make. You only got two? Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> So everybody yeah. in the well, that happened, that happened in the college of Bahamas when the young lady was doing three rules that she was required to do. That was just uh, out of half? Yeah, that was the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Well, of course, like when you, when, the capacity, when you do have the capacity, you get, like I said, the additional resource, technology, and your appetite has changed. Because today, you, who said they were hungry earlier? Someone was telling me they didn't eat all day. Oh, that's okay. Because when you, when you get off from here, you, you can eat a horse, right? Well, that's free food, you know, ain't nothing. You want to sign in the hotel? I didn't want to take lunch. Oh, sorry. So you didn't even eat? Too many more things that you can't eat? <laughs> 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 you know, when you're in the hotel, it's frustrating. Okay, I guess. I didn't have a chance. 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 I didn't have a chance
And I said, no, I don't want to hear it. You'll do your free voucher. Fifty dollars to go to Danny's. I said, eh, okay, it's only fifteen minutes. I'll listen to the presentation. So it's so much free stuff. You, you just ain't gonna walk off, right? And they give you a free T-shirt, pan, and they'll glow in the dark stuff. All kind of foolish stuff they give you. And I just started there, like before I know that whole hour, and I got a whole, you know, bag full of junk. So it is what it is. You will always have an issue. Seven dollars. Go up with your pay for it. Sorry? So the um, human capital technology, those stuff you is is a hefty price. And that's the direction we're going in. Let me give an example. I hope you know one way that I've seen you. Good, I can talk with them. Because guess what? They're not encouraging you to come in the branch, you know. No. Right now, technology. it's technology because the lady, I went in the other day, I don't want to put this on my car. She said, sir, you really want to make that? I said, yeah, you right here, right here. She said, no, go back and go to the ATM. Yeah. And then I said, but you right here, and you're either no. to the front of the line. She said, no, go to the ATM. I said, you serious? Social you everything is digital. Everything is digital because, you know, it, it costs money to have a, a body. So if it's in you, you gotta pay that body. Air condition gotta run, light and all that. So they say, you know what? No, no, machine. Go to go to the machine. And I said, you serious, miss? Well, I had a bad experience at RBC. And I had but I went to RBC because my my um the little debit card, you know, you you get a good debit card, you think you're rich. So I got a little debit card, right? And that was only what you got on your account. So I lost the debit card in the states of all places, right? Florida. But you know what the Florida teeth, right? So, then, you know, so I got my little debit, so I, I came back and I, I said, I need to get a, a new debit card. And they said, oh, no problem. It's only take two weeks. I said, that's on the long, though. So I said, you know what? I'll give them an extra week. Three weeks later, I walked in there. This lady, she she on the phone. And I was like, uh, sorry, I'm sorry to disturb you. You look busy. But um, I'm here to get my debit card. She said, oh, let me check. Da -da 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 -da. What's your name again? I said, Ronnie Daddy. Oh, no, I'm ready. You'll come back in two weeks. Yeah, a I gave you an extra week. And she said, no, I'll, I'll make a note and then come back in two weeks. And I said, you serious? I might as well close my account. You want to close it now? <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you a lot of words. Like when she said, I was like, you know what? That's when the, the, the band time blood got into my head. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I want to close my account. Somebody forget the water that car. Yeah, that's, that's what I was like to get daughter. Yeah. Oh, that's the day when my head clicked. And I said, like, uh, yes, I would like to close that's my that's account. That's and then she said, okay, go on the line. I said, you want to send me back on that line again? <laughs> 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 and I just been waiting a whole hour. That's torture. That's torture. Yeah, that's 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 I just been on the line for 30 minutes. You can send me back and I, and I said, nah, I gotta go to the back of the line. Can you wake up more with it? No, it don't work like that. And she didn't mind, so I said, you know what? Let me get my $450 with this bike. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I was, I was not bringing the money to the bank, you know. Yeah, I ain't let $450 then. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if I'm not walking in, yeah, you broke, sir. <laughs> so I didn't mind. That don't mean to say you broke. Yes. Yeah, no. well, yeah. 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 And you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wasn't prepared to give another two weeks. No, I wouldn't have that. That's five weeks. Well, they ain't encouraging me, and I ain't got no car to go to the machine. You see my that I want two weeks? Well, it's four fifty. I got my money back, and I. But it is what it is. So, so don't go to RBC. No, I mean, just don't, you know, just be mindful of stuff like that. Don't worry about that. Because plenty of people will win from there anyway. Yeah. And you have to Okay. I think I did touch on the next bullet point. It speaks to the roads and responsibilities. There's a tree line in the defense system in place in most financial institutions. Where you have the frontline staff who would um, they have awareness. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so you got the tree line defense system in place where you have the front line. Yeah? Uh, first line of defense. We call them the 1A. You got your 1B, which is your you have quality assurance, places at your institution. No? <laughs> you don't have quality assurance at your institution? 
Evaluation compensations. Yeah. Uh, regulators expect that too. If you're working hard, you should be paid. Especially compliance. It's not an easy job. Don't let anyone fool you. It's not an easy job. Compensation should be, um, you said preach? Preach. Oh, okay. Nice. I thought you said breach. So preach. Preach. Okay. So your compensation should be in line with um, your performance. Yeah? Especially when you have the um, smaller or boutique financial um, institutions and one person doing everything, it should be better than uh, like, ha like how uh, my model is a big compliance department where you have like um, nine persons in just one. Thank you all. Nine, nine or one. Yeah, nine. I mean, you're you know how, how many you have? Well, in time it'll grow. No, that's that's just for like how we have for the Bahamas. Right, that's for the Bahamas, yeah. Yeah, just for the Bahamas um, business we have not. Um, I think it's eight or nine. nine of us. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a lot. When you talk with the you know the, the biggest footprint, the biggest bike in the country, you would need that. As a matter of fact, it's not enough, by the way. Adequately for us, we should have at least 12 to 14 compliance persons. Central Bank, um, Basel, um, you, you guys are familiar with Basel. Um, I don't know if you take a look at the spirit law, the letter law, this Marissa can tell me more about that. Um, they have the opinion, as international best practice, you should have a compliance personnel in every branch or business unit. That's a model that we should consider adopting. As a matter of fact, the institution I work at, which will remain nameless, we fought back on that. Because I mean, we got to hire another 10 bodies. And we said, no, just tell them we have the three line events. You know, tell them, keep telling them, remind them. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have the um, in the front line. If you get past them, then you got compliance, you got internal audit, external audit. So we don't really need to have more compliance um, personnel. But the reality is, you do. Technology is great. Don't, don't get too caught up in technology. You know why? Technology cannot do something we can do, rationalize. You only see figures and triggers that are embedded in the system. But you, the one who got rationalized and say, hey, this looks suspicious because X, Y, and Z. system can't do that. They only can do what you tell it to do. It looks at maybe some thresholds, numbers, and whatever, some positive or negative matches, whatever, but you still need to have that human element. So even though RBC say, oh, we don't need no people, just go to the machine and machine and do everything, uh, you still need that human element. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I understand where they're going because it's a business decision where just move it to Jamaica. Because <laughs> one Bahamian staff member is really like six Jamaicans in terms of salary. Yeah, so they outsource even some institutions like India. Uh, 
Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Do you know it's cheaper to outsource going to India? You know, account opening than having someone here do it. You yeah. know, yeah, it's cheaper in India. You pay them like a staff here. You pay them how much an hour? How much? How much? How much you pay? Just just say a staff is getting paid. Hour. Hour. You tell me the hour. You're talking about a day. <laughs> so why would I want to pay you $15 when I can pay someone 15 cents? US, of course, the equivalent. So why would I want to... I save money. Well, you remember now, it's still a, you have to make business sense too now. Yeah, you still have to make business sense. Just saying. So when you hear about the compensation and... Um, it, it should be equated with your performance in the in the perfect world, of course. Yeah. See, for me, you gotta excuse me. I came from government, so I used to get this little thing called bonus or PID. So when I when I when I saw my first little check, I was like, boy, so what? Twenty five hundred dollars. I go on downtown. I was trying to get my get the latest um well not the most expensive job, but the ones um you know. Huh? What, a $500 spoiler? Yeah, I, I made a copy of the little jack. I made a copy that I took it home. I think they put a dollar. But um, you know, just to say that, you know, because you, you are used to that. You know? I mean, I'm sure you guys get big bonuses where you are. And all that stuff. But um, just be able to get, you know? What's your definition of the... Sorry. I still love that on the side. I appreciate it. But it, it's going to go. Brian can take all of us out to lunch. Brian? Yeah. Yeah. You can take us out to lunch now? Y'all can take us. Me? I would put it right I'll take you out to lunch now if you want all the breakfast. Oh, <laughs> all the breakfast. Yeah. I'll take all the breakfast. Sorry. 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 You'll be eating that for lunch though, with all the breakfast in the meat. So don't worry about that. So there will be management issues as it relates to um, the AML policies. Policy again is your Bible, and there will be issues and there will be challenges. So any strategy for protecting your business against exposure to possible money laundering or terrorist financing begins with the formulation and the adoption of this policy, your Bible, your guide. So if it ain't in the word, you can't do it. And to get an exception would require senior management and or compliance sign-offs. Make sense? So that's why you get all these um, requests or queries coming to compliance. Um, staff say, oh, we can't do this. Let's run it by compliance. Let's run it by legal. Yes. People, why? Because it's law and policy. So who's the tiebreaker? You go to compliance. Yeah. And who has the um, oversight of the, the policy? Compliance. You guys are going to have a lot of power if you don't already have a lot of power and a lot of say. Sometimes the senior manager don't accept what you have to say anyhow because I mean, they call us business blockers too, by the way. They, they call us the conscience of the business. Yeah, I got this, this big deal I want to broke up. you like, oh, no. the law say, you all always come talking about the law, man. Think about the profits. Yeah, look how much money on the table for us. You all always talk about this stupid stuff like fines and jail. So Let's think about that later on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know the funniest thing? They all say, I just need your signature to sign up one of the compliance officers. You get paid, you just paid, you just a signature, by the way. I just need my rest of the sign off on this. Yeah. So anything go wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and see the evil gummy. She right to go on the right and we'll hide now. Yes, they are. Uh, I've, I've seen some of the fines. I looked at an interesting one for tipping off. It used to be 50000 It's now 5000 That's 1,000%. How do you find 1,000%? Now you're all right. Just right Even with money laundering fine, it's no longer 100,000. Now 500, that's 500 percent. The um, tipping off, it went from seven years to 20 years. And the reason why that's happening too, because again, with the blacklisting mm -hmm. and the um, non effective way from CFADA, so they're saying that why do you have a lot of laws on the books? We got plenty of laws now. Yeah. Execution, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Y'all can't demonstrate no one going to jail. No. But you notice everyone who's getting arrested or charged before court that they're talking about that money laundering. Yes. <laughs> so when C5 have come back again now to do the evaluation, they say, see what we got to do. Money laundering is all the bad now. Everybody getting a lot of money. <laughs> but guess what? He was always on the books. Mm -hmm. And Marissa, a lot of folks, they scared to prosecute those um, money laundering cases because we don't have the experience. 
How you get experience if you never prosecuted it? Mm. Everyone's scared of that they don't like fraud and models either. They, oh man, give me a murder any day. Just a knife, a body, and blood. But when you got a fraud model, layers and layers of paper. I gotta get an account and forensic audit. I gotta yeah. do so much. This. You don't like them kind of stuff. Two guys fighting. One star, the next one. Straightforward. Someone was some. Um, uh, misappropriating funds over a 20 year period. That's it. That's, that's a lot of boxes and boxes. You got to bring in about 100 victims and give me a, a good murder. Any, give me a juicy murder. I don't want no fraud. It is what it is. So we have to demonstrate that it's effective and how you can do that. You have to test it. And that's why the evaluators came in. They say you all are less than effective. Because right now, you'll have all the stuff on the books. And you all, you all, one thing with the Bahamas now, we pass a legislation like that now. We don't play, we do it under, under, the, under the cloak of darkness. Mm -hmm. But the effectiveness, how do you test that? Mm -hmm. How many people actually went to jail? How much homes were forfeited? How much money is went into the confiscated asset fund? Mm -hmm. You ain't got too much victory, victory is there. Yeah? And your AML policy should be governed by a risk-based approach. Basically, they say in a common sense approach. Yeah? Everything can be a checkbox. That makes sense? I don't know if that makes sense. It's based on the risk that this customer or entity would present to my organization, the level of exposure that I would face. And based on that, I got to make um, a conscientious decision whether um, it's within our risk appetite that I should take that on. Do I have enough staff? Do I have um, coverage? How do I mitigate against this? It makes sense. Everyone who comes to your entity or to do business, you don't take them on, right? No. Why? <laughs> I'm just curious. Hey, no, they just get her open. What the finance again? It comes back down to one word, you know. The one word that we play with every day. Risk. I don't have that I just want that risk appetite to take on this. Customer, not today. <laughs> you know, I had a I had a request just two weeks ago. One of my relationship managers they contacted me. And I can call no name. The relationship manager said that I have a client I would love to take on, man, but I won't bounce something off you. Anytime you hear someone come to compliance, that's what bounce up more. Yes, I said, go ahead. I need to sit down. But it's still a little this ain't this ain't gonna be long. Um, he had a little matter in the states some time ago. I say, okay. I listen in. <laughs> um, but he clear now. Um, you know, I did a little search and he, he, you know, he good right now. Right I said, now. what kind of matter? But he slapped his wife. No, no, no. I said, what was that? No. Tax evasion. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they never said the whole story, by the way. When they come to compliance, you never get the full story. Yep. I just need a sign up on here. I said, what, what was the issue with him? What was the negative news he found? Oh, I said, what? Yeah, they can't talk. <laughs> yeah, they can't talk. <laughs> and then they said, OK. Okay, he had to pay a fine and this and that. And that's it. So it's risk based. And then I started asking questions like, okay, um, he wants to move his money here now to us. Um, do we have any filings on him? Tax returns? Um, well, he wasn't really filing taxes because <laughs> see, his money was in a hole in um, a uh, hole IBC, and he really wasn't doing anything, and it was just sitting there, and it was in his. Lawyer's account. I say, his lawyer, okay, you got to be curious. Where's his lawyer? lawyer? <laughs> his lawyer's in Delaware. I said, man, too much things ain't making sense, man. Delaware? Tax evader, Delaware, a hub for tax evaders. And he's a U.S. citizen, too. Oh. No tax filing. I said, man, I know. But see, remember now, these relationship managers, they're driven by targets. Yeah. Everyone at the beginning of the year, you need to bring in four million. Yeah. You need to bring in ten million. You need to bring in a hundred million. And then you got compliance and nah, we are not gonna sign up on that. <laughs> you between me and my bonus. <laughs> <laughs> you see what's happening there? Yeah. Yeah. I need to bring in X more to business. Compliance is not the most loved people, by the way. No. No. They call me earning from the business blocker. <clears throat> You know, I get my eye, people roll their eye at me sometimes. Right. People say stuff like, I hope you die a slow death. <laughs> <laughs> All kind of stuff you hear. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen here, when you say, <laughs> <laughs> All kind of stuff you hear. I mean, I, don't, I mean, you know, me, I, I jump in my car, 
I'm going go to Kentucky. But I told about my experience with Kentucky. Just a side note. Um, you know when you go in there, my car's a little old, sort of old. I mean, listen here. I didn't drive that till the tires fall off. I'm ashamed. I got two hubcaps. I'm ashamed. I am not ashamed. I have mixed. I have mixed matching hubcaps. One ain't one missing on the front. Right? No, there's a fellow named one cake. He has some one cakes. Yeah, I got mine. But listen here. I'm ashamed. But you know what's embarrassing when you go to Kentucky and you pull it up, you know, and you drive it. You got one eye on another thing and you and your car turn off. On the drive through On the drive through Ain't it more embarrassing than that. And you know I talk, I tell that car off, right? I said, you all embarrassing. I said, hey, you, who's a stupid car in the It is what it is. It was what it is. She ain't well, whatever. I mean... <laughs> Again, he, 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 he um, did some work for me and he, he got me running. I was able to get to work. That's all the water. Yeah, that's what he did when he got after that. Oh, you got your lunch break? No, this was in the night. You know, when you oh. try to go home and you, you try to get one of the two weeks. You know? <laughs> I ain't out loud, nothing. That car got nothing. I ain't rich. 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 I ain't rich.